Welcome to another on shape video tutorial for Bryanson School. This is the third extension task for the Bluetooth speaker models. Uh, the first extension task added holes in for the screws to the casing of the, your chosen speaker. And the second one created the screw and nut to hold the speaker to the casing. So if you haven't followed those two tutorials, I would suggest you go back and do those in order before starting uh, with this one. Okay, so let's make a start. I'm going to open up the oval speaker. You can see because the last thing that I was working on was the, the nut and the screw that it's uh, showing that as an image. So left click to open that up in the software and here's the part studio. So uh, part studio one, we've got our speaker and then the fasteners part studio, we have our nut and our screw, which you can see are two separate parts over here. So to create uh, the mesh, which is our next task, we're going to create another part studio. So come to the bottom left, click on the little plus sign, left click on create part studio. And again, we'll rename the part studio before we make a start. So right click, rename, and we'll call it mesh because we're going to use this to create the speaker mesh hit enter and we're ready to go now again both speakers in your speaker case would have a mesh on them uh, but we only need to model the part once and when we come to do the assembly in uh, tutorial number five we can bring that uh, part in multiple times okay so we're going to make a start and we're going to start on the top work plane uh, following the edge of the front work plane. So I'm going to hover the mouse over to the top work plane. I'm going to right click and then left click new sketch. And then I'm going to press N for normal two so that we're looking flat down onto the top work plane. Now to start off with, I want a center rectangle. So I'm going to left click on the little arrow by the rectangle tool, pick the center point rectangle, and I'm just going to hover the mouse over the origin left click and drag out a rectangle now it's not going to matter how big that is because we're now going to dimension it so i'm going to use the dimension tool i'm going to select the top line and click out the way and i'm just going to type in one so it's just going to be a uh, one millimeters across and you can see that's very very tiny so let's use the scroll wheel to zoom in and i'm now going to click on the left hand side and just to click it slightly out the way, uh, left click to place the dimension, and that's going to be one as well. So hit enter. So I've got a one millimeter uh, square rectangle that I've drawn. Now to turn this into the mesh, I need multiple copies of this, but I'm also thinking about where the origin of the part is, because that's going to help me uh, later on when I want to put some holes in it for mounting the screw, mounting it with the screws. So uh, let's create a pattern of this shape for our mesh. So I'm going to use the pattern tool, linear pattern, and it then wants me to select what I want to pattern. So I'm just going to left click and hold and drag over the rectangle. And you can see by default, uh, there's a dotted line going off to the right. And if I use the mouse wheel to scroll out and scroll back in again, you can see that the pattern is 25 millimeters apart and it's creating uh, three uh, of these rectangles. So that's two copies of the original. So the first thing I'm gonna do is double click on the 25 and change that to four. So now you can see um, that I've got three of the original item and I'm going to double click on the three and change that to a nine. And now you can see them all spread out to the right. If I uh, move in, you can see that they've only gone in one direction. If I zoom out, you can see that it's one times in this. So I could use this to create an array going both sort of left and right and up and down. Uh, I only want to go to the right at the moment. So I'm just going to confirm this with a left click. And you can see that we've got these uh, all drawn out as a nice pattern. Now I want to mirror these ones. So I'm going to hold the left mouse button down, select all of them apart from the one that was drawn around the origin, and I'm now going to select the mirror tool. So I've done this slightly in reverse order to what we normally do. Normally we select the mirror tool, it asks me to select a mirror line, and then we select what we want to mirror. This time we've pre-selected the parts, and we're going to left click on the edge of the work plane that's vertical as our mirror line, and you can see then it's put those parts over there. 
just turn the mirror off. So I'm going to hold the right mouse button down and just spin that around so you can see that we've got lots of tiny squares drawn out and we're now going to extrude those. So left click on the extrude tool and I'm going to change the distance to 66. So 66 on the keyboard and enter and I want this to be symmetric so I'm just going to tick the symmetric box as well and then left click to confirm that. So you can see that they're all different colors at the moment and you can see down here on the left hand side uh, I've got lots of separate parts. That's okay we're not going to worry about that for the moment. The next thing we need to do is to draw the next part of the mesh. So this is where we need to think about our orientation. Now our next uh, part is going to be drawn on the right work plane so that it intersects with the line that we've done already. So I'm just using the right mouse button to turn around. I'm going to right click on the right work plane, left click on new sketch, and then I'm going to press the N key so that I um, normal to. I'm going to use the center point rectangle again, and I'm going to zoom into the middle, uh, left click on the origin, and drag it out just a little bit bigger so we can see what's going on. Use the dimension tool to dimension the sides one millimeter and just to make sure on the top one as well make that one one millimeter and I'm just now going to repeat what I did before but this time we want them to go up and down not left and right so I'm going to use the linear pattern I'm just going to drag that over the box that we've already drawn and you can see that it wants to send them off to the right uh, with three copies and a spacing of 25 millimeters uh, we don't want those and going upwards we've only got one copy and we want more so I'm going to double click on the one first change that to nine I'm going to double click on the 25 and change that to four and hit enter and I'm now going to double click on the three times and change that to one so we now have our pattern going up uh, but nothing coming off to the right so I'm going to left click now to confirm that and now I'm going to mirror again. So let's mirror these the other way. So let's uh, select the mirror tool, select our mirror line, which is going to be the top work plane, and then drag over all of the squares that we've got apart from the one that's on the origin, and it's drawn those in there. Move that round to the right, just uh, using the right mouse button held down. Left click on extrude, and again I'm going to change the distance to 66 and then left click in symmetric and left click and we can see that we've got quite an array of colors there uh, because each of those is an individual part so if we drag down here you can see that we've now got 34 parts what we want to do is combine those into one part so to do that I'm going to select them all so I'm just going to uh, left click and hold in space drag a rectangle over all the parts and I'm now going to left click on this feature the boolean feature this allows us to combine parts and what I want to do is to effectively unite them so union is the option that we want and you can see with the preview we've now only got one part down at the bottom so left click to say that we're happy with that and you can see that they've all now changed uh, to one particular color uh, so let's change this color from the default so last time when we changed the the appearance we right clicked on the part and used that I'm going to show a different way of doing it over here we've got the appearance panel I'm going to left click on that here we've got the color at the moment I'm going to right click and I'm going to go edit appearance and I'm going to pick a nice bright sort of goldy color so left click on that left click on the tick then click on those three circles to send that back and we've got the part drawn. Now what we need to do is put some holes in here for the screws. So I'm just going to orientate it around using the right mouse button held down. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to highlight the surface. You can see all the edges are highlighted. Right click, left click on new sketch, press N to view normal, and I can actually right click in space and left click on zoom to fit. Uh, so, uh, as before, I'm going to use uh, the center point circle tool. I'm going to draw that out the way. So draw it over to the left. The reason for doing it over here and not over our model is if I move over the model, you can see it wants to pick up on corners and things like that. I don't want to snap the center of the circle to a particular point on the model. I want to dimension it. 
So uh, I've drawn the circle. Let's dimension it first of all from th the edges of the work plane. So left click on the edge of that work plane, left click in the center of the circle. That wants to be 26 millimeters, so type that in on the keyboard. The same again for the top work plane to the center of the circle and the same distance, 26. And then finally, left click on the edge of the circle and come out and change the diameter to four millimeters and hit enter. So I've got one hole, I need to mirror that across over to this side. So I'm now gonna use the mirror tool, select the edge of the work plane, select the entity in the sketch, deselect the mirror, select the mirror again to pick a different mirror line, edge of the top work plane, that circle, the other circle, and now those circles I can use to cut the holes. So I'm going to use the extrude tool. Uh, I want to click on remove and I'm going to change blind to through all. Left click and there we've got the mesh drawn with the holes. So that's the end of this tutorial with the mesh created. Uh, next tutorial uh, will be slightly more complicated and that will be drawing the speaker or a block model of the speaker. And then following that, tutorial number five will be about assembling all of these parts together and showing you how you can create an exploded assembly as well. Thanks for watching. See you again in tutorial number four.